Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. My name is London Drysdale with Cherokee Valley Railroad and today I'm going to show you how to make this highly detailed trailer park diorama. I will walk you step by step through the build process so let's get right into this build. So every good diorama starts with your base. So in this case I'm using a half inch plywood. It's a nice thickness. It'd be perfect for today's build. So the first thing I want to talk about are the trailers themselves. So for today's build, I'm going to be using IMX Mobile Homes. They are nice and high quality and made from a uh, thick resin or a ceramic, and they will work perfectly for today's build. I will be using two of the IMX Mobile Homes. The, the orange and white one is the Skyline, and the blue and white is the Great Lakes model. As you see here, I've already weathered the orange and white one, but I will show you later in the video how to weather the blue and white one uh, very thoroughly. Uh, another trailer I'm using is a uh, little kit, vintage kit actually, that I uh, found on eBay a while back. I wanted to use it uh, in this project. It's going to be the office. So the first thing I want to do here is just place everything where uh, I want it to be. Uh, basically the two trailers and the center of the two trailers is going to be a abandoned trailer pad or like a cement base. So it's going to be really cool. Um, over in the top right here I'm going to have a dumpster, an ice machine, a little fenced in area as well as the office trailer and then the road will go in front of the orange and blue ones and between the office and the other trailers. As well as the front lawns for the trailers and the two driveways. And in the back I'll have the pad as well as some uh, random junk and all kinds of cool little 3D printed details that you will see later in today's video. So starting here, I'm going to be building the road. Now for the road, I'm just going to measure out uh, a width of basically two 187 HO scale vehicle lengths uh, or something close to that as a trailer park road is usually uh, thinner than most. While I have the pencil out, what I'm going to do is go around the whole build and just uh, outline the trailers and uh, all the details to get a general idea of where everything is going to be. So once we have everything drawn out, we can uh, actually pull our road material out. So today's road is going to be a product from Bush. And this is HO scale. Uh, it's a product I actually got from Germany, I believe, and it's uh, called a weathered asphalt, almost like a tarmac, and it's going to work perfect for this build. I discovered this product a while back and been wanting to use it for something like this, and uh, the trailer park seemed like the greatest thing to use. So all I did here was just uh, mark my lines on the bush uh, roads, uh, lined up with the marks I made on our plywood base for the diorama build, and then just take a sharp pair of scissors and cut out the road material. Once the road material is cut out, we can now place on the diorama to see what it's going to look like. So once the main roadway is cut out in place, it's now time to make the entrance wings of the asphalt road. So in this case, I'm just using a uh, general product. It's an HO gauge uh, ruler. It has many different gauges on it, but in this case, it works perfect because it actually has the HO scale feed on it. So here, I'm just going to measure uh, the feed out, which I believe is 6 foot by 14 feet. I will just make my uh, pattern from the ruler and then just take a sharp pair of scissors and cut out like we did for the other road. I will then just repeat the step for the other side of the road. Then I will cut out this side as well. Place them both um, in the area where they are going to be and give it an idea of what it's going to look like.
We'll move our main roadway in and put the side uh, pieces on. As you can see here, um, it's going to be basically be an entrance and in between, or in the middle I should say, of the main road there will be an island where the sign will be. Next we will make the uh, parking lot for the uh, trash cans and ice machine. Just repeating the same process as uh, getting our measurements, marking it out on our bush roadway, and cutting it out with a pair of scissors. Then just check fitment of where you want it to be and we're all good. So once the roadway is done, we can now start on the painting process. So the first coat of paint here is just going to be in acrylic brown. Basically the brown paint will be everywhere that static grass will be. All we'll do is get some paint on our brush and just start painting um, around our outlines of our road, our trailers, uh, parking lot, and so forth. Once we have all of our land form painted, what we're going to do next is uh, apply the road. So here I'm just using some white glue, uh, putting it in an uh, old cap or paint spray lid. Just getting some on a brush and brushing it on uh, pretty thickly onto where our road surface is going to be. Once the glue is applied, all we have to do now is uh, put down our road. So here I'm just going to lay the road section down, press down, and make sure there gets glue coverage over the entire thing. Grab the second piece and repeat the same process. As well as repeating the same process for the wings up front. I then will just grab some random heavy objects around my shop to place on the road so it keeps everything nice and pressed down for when the glue dries, as we want this to be as flat as possible. So once that is done, we can now start working on the foundation for the trailer uh, in the center. So basically this is just going to be a foundation, uh, just a cement pad to make it resemble that a trailer has been missing. So all I'm doing here is using a uh, double-sided sticky tape. Uh, it's basically the tape that has a foam consistency. All I'm going to do is just create a box around where the foundation is going to be, basically with four pieces of tape. So what I'm going to do is uh, just cut the tape in the length and width that I want it to be in. Then I will just press down firmly while applying the tape in the box pattern. So once the tape is down, we can now start our mixing process for the cement material. So in this case, I'm just using a random plaster of Paris I had in the shop. So the mixing directions will usually be on the box. Uh, in this case, it's pretty simple. It's just a two-part plaster of Paris with a one-part water mix. So once mixed together, I just stir thoroughly until we get to the consistency that we're after. 
Uh, here I'm after a uh, pretty smooth because we want to be able to uh, manipulate the uh, cement pretty good. So once mixed, uh, we're ready to pour. So all I'm going to do is pour in between the foam tape that we laid down and then use the brush to just uh, separate it out, trying to get it uh, into every corner and all around the edges of our tape. Once we have our entire surface covered, we can now take a uh, paint scraper or putty knife. Uh, in this case, I have a metal one in the shop, so basically all I'm going to do is uh, run the scraper back and forth across the foam tape. Basically, it smooths out the plaster and makes it a nice, clean, smooth surface for us. After a few minutes of filling in small areas and moving this uh, scraper back and forth, we finally have a nice, clean, smooth surface uh, that looks very good and resembles a cement pad. So after it's dried, all we're going to do is just peel the tape up around all four corners and just make sure to blow away or pick up any loose debris uh, or plaster that gets on your diorama surface. Once the pad is complete, we can now start on the landscaping itself. So in this case, I'm just using some normal Elmer's white glue and a spray paint can lid along with a brush to brush on the glue to the base. Now we will just brush the glue on anywhere where we want our static grass to be, so around the trailers and around the road material, and as well as around the foundation and the trash can area. Once the glue has been applied, we can now start using our static grass applicator. So in this case, I'm using my homemade applicator. Um, if you want to learn how to build one of these, there are many great tutorials on YouTube, as well as I might have one here in the future that shows interest. The static grass applicator uses uh, static electricity. Basically, you have a wire connected to a metal screen at the end of your applicator that goes to a metal rod that you touch the diorama base with. While shaking vigorously uh, the applicator, grass will shoot out and once it hits the electric charge, it'll make the grass stand up, giving you a very realistic result that is one of my favorite things to do on any diorama. We will then just continue on the other side of the road until we have grass uh, everywhere where we want it to be. Once you are done using your static grass applicator, make sure you go around and collect all the grass that has fallen off and went around your build, as grass shoots out pretty far with these applicators. Once the grass has been applied, we can now start on the driveways for the trailer. So basically, for the driveways, it's going to be the exact same process as the static grass. Uh, we move the trailers back on the, onto the model, and then just uh, use our Elmer's white glue, spread it anywhere we want the dirt for the driveways to be. In this case, it's going to be on our trailers and where the foundation is, uh, as well as across the road for the office trailer. So my favorite material to use for any driveway or dirt road is just dirt from outside. So all I've done is just collected some uh, fine dirt from outside, out by the garden. All I'm going to be using is a uh, spray paint can lid and a uh, stocking or a pantyhose. 
I will fill our uh, spray paint can lid with the dirt from outside. I'll place our stocking over the lid, making sure it's uh, very tight as the stocking creates uh, basically a, a, a thin sifter, if you will, or a mesh. Once done, all we have to do is just shake vigorously over top of where we want our dirt driveways to be. Um, the stocking really makes it, gives it a very even coverage, so it works perfect for this uh, model. It is one of my favorite methods to use as the results are basically flawless every time. I will then just take a uh, paintbrush and wipe off our road surface and anywhere that we don't want the dirt to be. Uh, so when we come back and glue everything with our spray glue, uh, we won't get glue all over our stuff. So basically to seal everything down, all I'm going to be using is a 50-50 mix of white glue and water. And just spray over the entire diorama uh, where we put down the static grass and our dirt material. Once we've sprayed all our glue, I'll just take a uh, new paper towel and wipe down the road surface and the cement pad, making sure we have all the glue that got on the road material off. So next up on the list is weathering our trailer. So to, for today's weathering process, I'm going to be using weathering powders. I will be using AIM product weathering powders as uh, they are my favorite. AIM's powders usually come in packages of four. Um, today I'm going to be using the rust ones. We will now grab our dry brush and start weathering our trailer. So starting off I'm using a mid-brown color. Now to weather using weathering powder all I do is just get a nice full coverage on our brush, wipe off most of it onto a paper towel, and then just start brushing right onto the side of the trailer. So with the mid-brown color, basically all I'm trying to do is make it as the uh, dirt or somewhat rust material. Uh, the mid-brown is just going to be uh, covered over the entire mobile home which is the sides, the front, back, and the roof. As you can tell, the difference is quite noticeable. And the weathering powder gives it a very realistic look. So once we've used our mid-brown color over the entire model, Next, I want to add uh, rust details. So here I'm using the brightest red rust color that came in the Ames product kits. And I'm going to be adding the red rust material anywhere where it looks like water would be running. So under windows, around tanks, uh, around doors, uh, and so forth. As well as a thorough coverage over the entire roof of the trailer. So once the trailer is weathered, we can now start painting our cement pad. So in this case, all I'm going to be using is a uh, gray, dark gray acrylic and our brush. And I'm just going to brush paint on the entire cement pad, painting everything that's white. And once this dries later, we will come back and do a whitewash, uh, which will be featured later in the video. Now that everything is painted, the glue is dried, we can now glue down the trailers themselves. So in this case, I'm just putting a little bit of white glue on the four corners and along the side of our trailers, making sure we get a nice adhesion to the base.
Once glue is applied, I will then just press the trailer into position and weigh it down uh, for a few seconds. Uh, you can also lay a heavy object on top uh, to be assured that the trailer is flat and dries 100%. I will then repeat the same process for the other trailer. As well as the uh, small office trailer. So once everything is glued down, we can now start on our 3D printed details. Now this is going to be a very cool segment of today's video. Uh, today I'm using my Elego Mars Pro. It's my uh, favorite resin printer that I have and will be perfect for printing our small HO scale details. Including figures, uh, junk accessories, and much more. So to get our uh, STL files for our 3D printer, what I did is went to cgtrader.com, one of my favorite websites to find STL files for 3D printing. Starting out, I was looking for a uh, man on a motorcycle, so I just uh, searched that in the top of their search bar and found one that I uh, really liked. It was basically a Harley Davidson with a guy on it. Do keep in mind that we are looking for an STL file. Uh, as there are many products on CG Trader that aren't available in STLs. Also keep in mind you usually have this uh, scale stuff down to 187. So once we find a file I like, I just add to my cart and go back to the searching looking for the other files I want. So in this case here I found a guy, uh, be perfect for our trailer park. It's basically a dude with the shirt off, uh, given the symbol, looks pretty cool. So I went ahead and added that to my cart as well. As well as I found these uh, dumpsters with trash bags that looked uh, very cool and very well detailed STL files. So I went ahead and added those to my order as well for today's trailer park build. Other files I found that I wanted uh, were a uh, Rottweiler dog. As well as a lady that would be good for uh, our one trailer. As well as another guy I found that I liked for uh, one of our vehicle builds. Another uh, website you can go to as well is Thingiverse.com. There are many uh, free actually STL files on Thingiverse if you don't want to spend any money for them. Um, I just looked up junk because I wanted some like uh, junk piles. Uh, the first one came right up. It was exactly what I was looking for. So I went ahead and downloaded that as well. So once everything downloaded, I just put it into my slicer. Uh, today I use a Chitu box. Um, worked perfect for me. All I had to do was just make the supports on the models after I had them scaled down to 187 and printed them out. So once everything's on the printer, uh, we can now start on other details. Uh, so starting out here, I have a chain link fence that I had laying around. All it is is an HO scale kit on a metal chain link fence that I just glued small metal rods to. To uh, install this chain link fence, all I'm using here is my pin vise tool with uh, small drill bits that come with them. What I'll do is I'll line up the chain link fence in the proper position where I want it, take our pin vise tool and drill our uh, small holes uh, all across where our posts are gonna be for our chain link fence. We will then just grab our fence once the holes are drilled, find the holes that we drilled, press our fence into them, uh, and we're good to go. Next up I wanted to install a uh, rusted out car. In this case I just had a model power uh, vehicle, it's a 187 scale El Camino, and I thought it'd be perfect for this model trailer park build. So all I did was just uh, heavily weathered it basically just uh, sponge paint under the whole model. Um, basically the same process as I would have weathering the trailer. So all I'm doing here is just putting some glue on the four wheels and gluing it into the position where I want it.
Once that is done, we will now start on our trees. So basically I wanted to have three small trees on this diorama. The product I am using for this is Super Trees by Scenic Express. Uh, they work great for 187 modeling. You can buy them in a big bulk box. It's basically like a uh, briar brush material. You just cut to the size you want. All I like doing is just using uh, basically our same glue water mix. Spray the tree after you get it cut and dip the tree into like a Woodland Scenics grass mixture. You can find an uh, easier technique on my other YouTube video I have right now, so if you want to check that out, you can uh, find a more detailed presentation on the trees themselves. To install the trees, uh, basically the same process as the fence. Use my pin vise tool to drill a hole, find the hole, and then stick the stump of the tree into the hole, and that seals it in place. I will then continue the whole process, putting three trees, uh, one middle, one right, and one left behind each trailer. Once trees are installed, now I want to start building our weapon fence. So for the fence, uh, wood fence, I'm going to be using a material from Bush. Basically the same exact material of the roadway, but this one uh, has a printed weather wood pattern on it. Uh, these are awesome for building roofs of buildings, uh, cabins, and so forth. Today it'll work perfect for building a weathered fence. All I've done is just cut the fence to the desired width and height, as well as just uh, double siding it, basically cutting uh, two of the same pieces and then gluing them to each other, making it a double-sided wooden fence. To secure the fences down, I'm just using some super glue, placing some super glue on the bottom of each fence and pressing it down until it's dry. Once installed, it looks very good, and I highly recommend buying these Bush products as they're one of my favorites to model with. I will then just cut out more of the material, double siding it, gluing them together, and gluing it down to the base uh, wherever I want a wood fence. In this case, I wanted a fence around the dumpster area, as well as around the office trailer. Once the fence is completed, it's time to build the little island out by the road to the entrance of our trailer park. So all I'm using here is another piece of the bushed asphalt material. Uh, some Elmer's uh, basically purple stick glue works perfect for adhering these together. I'll just put some glue on the back of the median and glue it down into the center of our roadway exactly where we want it to be. So while I was on the computer earlier, I decided to make the trailer park sign. So in this case, I wanted our trailer park to be called Trackside. So I just went to Photoshop, found a plywood a chipboard design, and put a text over top of it saying Trackside Trailer Park. I as well made an arrow for the sign, and for the sign post, it's very simple. I just used a toothpick, cut the point off the top, stuck the Trackside Park sign on top of the flat part of the toothpick, as well as gluing the arrow to the side of the toothpick. Later I decided to paint the uh, pole black as well as the arrow. For installing the signs, pretty simple. Basically the same process as the trees and the fence. Just using our pinhole device, uh, we'll create a hole in the platform and then put a little super glue on our trackside sign and then stick it into the hole and it'll be securely uh, fastened. So once that is done I wanted to go back and weather the cement pad. So in this case, like I said earlier, I wanted to do a white wash to it. 
all I whitewash is, is just getting uh, some white paint on your brush, wiping off a majority of the paint and then uh, whatever paint is left in the brush. Uh, you go over top of your concrete platform or rock material and it gives it a uh, brings out all the details in it. If you would like to see uh, a better tutorial on this, you can head over and check out my lighthouse diorama, uh, which I showed how to uh, whitewash rocks. After a few hours, the figures have 3D printed, and they turned out fantastic. One of my favorites is the motorcycle. It'll be a perfect fit for this diorama, as well as all the figures that are shown here. So all I'm going to do is just uh, put some tape onto a yardstick, stick our uh, figures all down onto it and go outside and give them a prime um, so I can paint them in a little bit after the primer has dried on the figures. So while the figures are drying, I've already completed the uh, dumpsters. Same process as I just mentioned, I just primed them and then painted and then I've done a whitewash on them to bring out some of the detail um, and weathered them slightly. To attach the dumpster to the diorama, all I've done is just add a little bit of super glue to the bottom of each dumpster, pressing it down until it's firmly tightened and securing it in place. I also 3D printed the little trash bags that go beside the dumpsters, so they look very cool. All I did was just paint them black, put a little bit of super glue on the bottom, and adhere them to the base with a pair of tweezers. Once the dumpsters were glued down, I also finished the uh, ice machine from earlier in the video. Basically just uh, heavily weathered it to make it look like it's out of use and it's been sitting here for years. Just put an ice detail on it and um, put some glue on the bottom, glued it down, securely fastened it to the base, and we were good to go. So now moving back over to the concrete base. All I've done is just 3D printed these uh, concrete pillars with rebar sticking out of the top. Uh, they were already weathered in the STL file so they fit great into this build. All I did here was just put a little bit of white glue on the bottom of each one, gluing eight of them in place uh, where the trailer used to sit. If you are interested in purchasing or uh, downloading any of the STL files, I will have links in the description uh, for certain ones I used in today's uh, tutorial. Moving on from the base, I also uh, went ahead and 3D printed uh, a small deck. I just went ahead and designed this one myself, uh, just using like a, a wood pattern. All I've done here is just glued it right to the side of the trailer, creating an old weathered rustic porch. Uh, turned out great. While I was working on this trailer, I also hooked the office sign on the side. Uh, basically the same as the uh, trackside trailer park sign, just a plywood uh, background in Photoshop with some black text over it. So also I 3D printed these, very cool. They are uh, piles of junk, which you've seen earlier. I downloaded these from Thingiverse for free. So if you want to download these, I have the uh, link in the description below. All I've done is primed them, painted them, um, heavily weathered them. So all I'm going to do here is just uh, place one of them on the concrete base, just putting a little bit of super glue on the bottom, holding it down until it has uh, dried enough to stay on its own. The second one, I went ahead and put behind the office trailer inside the wood fence to create like a uh, small junkyard scene. These are very cool STL files and I highly recommend you 3D printing them. So next up I wanted to add a sign to today's build. So my favorite place to get signs is Tennessee Valley Custom Models. Uh, they have custom 187 HO scale and other scale signs. Uh, Main USA and they're an awesome company to work with. 
I chose one of their railroad themed signs as it works good with trackside trailer park. So all I've done to install the sign is just uh, use the pin vise tool, drill a little hole. As you can see here, I've done a little bit of weathering to the sign, uh, just put, its, uh, put some brown paint on it, and uh, used a little sponge or brush tool to separate the paint out, giving it a rust effect. So all I'm going to do is just stick the sign in the hole, and that will securely fasten it to the diorama. Once the sign is installed, we can now use our 187 scale vehicles. So here are the four vehicles that are going to be featured in today's diorama tutorial. They have been weathered and detailed, and I will show you a breakthrough of each one now. Starting up, we have this very cool van that I've uh, painted and weathered. Basically, this started out as a Trident Chevy van in 187th scale. All I've done is create rust along the bottom and the fender wells. Um, I masked off a couple of the doors and painted them a different color to give it the resemblance of uh, doors have been changed, as well as painting one wheel black to give it a uh, resemblance it's been changed. And I completed this uh, model with a for sale sign in the window, which really pulls off the detail. One of my favorite models I've built. Next up we have a uh, 90s Ford car. I've just uh, weathered, simply weathered it. Um, and it'll be good for our office trailer. Next up is one of my favorites. It's a uh, lowrider custom 187 HO steel uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, just has custom wheels and tires on it and has been detailed for this build. Last but certainly not least is our 187 HO scale Chevy Blazer or GMC Jimmy made by Bush. This model has just been uh, rusted out and as well as I painted the wheels and tires to give it a mud look, as well as a dry brushing of our mid-brown color uh, weathering powder. These vehicles will be perfect uh, for today's trailer park build as they're all weathered and look kind of old and crappy. So to adhere the vehicles to the diorama, basically pretty simple as like always, I'm just using some uh, white glue, putting some glue on each of the four wheels and gluing it, pressing it down into the diorama until it is uh, firmly set. I will then just continue this process for all the vehicles in today's build. Once the vehicle's on, we are just now going to add our finishing touches to the diorama. So in this case, I just have some weathered boards that I've glued down together, as well as just gluing them to the base. Next up, I have some uh, plywood sheets that I printed out in my printer. Very simple, just went on Google and found a plywood sheet somebody took a picture of, printed it out in Photoshop, glued two sides together, making it seem like a thick sheet of plywood. I just added a couple sheets together, glued to the fence, um, put a second sheet down, as well as I uh, put a broken sheet down. I just cut, uh, cut up a piece of it and made it resemble as a piece of plywood was uh, smashed and broke and getting ready to burn up in a fire.
I also made up a few more plywood sheets for the other side, lay on our concrete pad, I also 3D printed a couple mattresses, as you always see those in trailer parks for some reason. So all I've done here is just put some glue on the bottom of the mattress, cut out a little area in the grass, and glued it down. I took another mattress that I made, as well as some pallets that you can see leaning up against the dumpster. Uh, I just took the mattress and leaned it up against the fence in the back to resemble that it's uh, trying to get thrown away. Another item I 3D printed for this diorama build as a little tool shed, all I did was find a file of a shed on Thingiverse, scaled it down to 187, painted the doors and windows, harshly weathered it. I went ahead and put some plywood, uh, the same plywood uh, material on top, and glued it down. I also 3D printed a couple lawn mowers for the build. Starting out as an orange uh, riding lawn mower, a newer version. I placed by the shed to resemble that it's been sitting there out front of the shed for a few years. I also had a uh, a Cub Cadet 3D printed vintage mower to put down by the junkyard pile. I also printed and painted this little push mower to put in front of the one trailer. And the last of the details is this 187th HO scale couch. I scaled it down, I bought the file from CG Trader, primed it, painted it, weathered it, and we were good to go. So now that all the details are in place, we can do the finishing touch, and that is the figures. So after a few hours of tedious paint work, I did finally finish these. After priming, they are pretty easy to paint. If you take your time on it, they turn out great. I hand painted each one of these with the smallest brushes I had, giving them uh, details as well as a uh, small whitewash on some of the jeans and shirts. But as you could see on this guy, there wasn't much whitewashing to do. And my personal favorite of the five figures is the guy on the motorcycle. So this one did take a while to paint. But after it was primed, I just used some acrylic paint, some small brushes, uh, took my time, and it turned out very nice. So the final thing to do is just glue down all of our figures that we painted. Basically just using some super glue, I put some on the wheels of the motorcycle as well as on the guy's foot, leaned them over, and glued them down. I continued gluing down all the figures with some super glue and a pair of tweezers. I finished off with gluing down the dog under the front of the office trailer as the guard dog of the trailer park. So the very last thing I did was just run around the very edges of the diorama and painted them black. And with that, that concludes today's diorama tutorial. I want to personally thank everybody for watching today's video, as it was a very fun build to make. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like below, and subscribe to the channel because there will be more of these videos coming out very soon. And as always, thank you for watching, have a fantastic day, and God bless.